Hello everybody and welcome to What's in the Box. Myself and Freddy from Battlefront are going to be checking out Tanks the Modern Age and this is the box and it contains M1 Abrams and T64s which is great because it's about time that uh, we started seeing some modern tanks flying around in this particular format because it's yeah. such a fun system to play. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, have you played much of it though? Yeah, a couple of games. In <laughs> fact, this particular box has only just come out of quarantine. It was uh -huh. it, we flew it over uh, a few days ago, but we've we had the um the the, the demo rules in, in PDF format. The good thing is that because it's using the kits from um, Team Yankee, Team Yankee, <laughs> I didn't I didn't get one, so I've got a, a ghillie suit sniper. Too, so, uh, anyway, yeah, the good thing is it's like the previous tanks mm -hmm. where you can use if you've got stuff from um, Flames of War. You could use Flames of War for the first iteration. Yep. With this one, if you've got herds and herds, uh, like I have, we all have, of, yep. of Team Yankee, you can use the Team Yankee stuff. But the plastics, as you'll see in a minute, you can use them out of the box without spraying because yeah. we've gone this little bit clever route now of using coloured plastics. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, uh, let's just open the box, shall we? Uh, can we show the, the back of the box first? Oh yeah, sure. I'll just have a sudden, yeah. Because sure that box. is rather, rather... Okay, so what do you want to point nice. out on the back? There we go. I mean, we've got... Um, the vehicles now, as you can see, that they're done by faction. Mm -hmm. Because we've come up with a clever idea where you can use platoons of tanks. And they'll have their own special uh, rule. Yeah. Special system. Um, but again... We've got, rather than just a picture of the tank, we've got action happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a brief write-up. But yeah, it's just, I wanted you to see the fact that they've got these platoon icons mm -hmm. so that when you're building um, an army, or, or a, well, it's not already an army, it's a platoon, if you've, if you've got everything from that, that same army, they'll get a special, uh, yeah. some special rules. All right. Okay. So let's get the box open. And what we're met with is very similar to the World War II box. We have our plastic sprues in here, so we have T-64s, two of, we'll get to those in a moment, and the M1 Abrams. So we'll have a look at those in just a sec. We have our cards, which are our item cards and our crew cards, if I remember right, from yeah. the previous iteration. And we've got the damage deck. Yep. Uh, there's a damage deck, there's a vehicle cards, and we've got the upgrades. Yep. So you've, and you've tons of that. Yeah, Absolute tons lots. of that in the box. So again, we'll open this up and we'll have a look at that in a moment. We then also have the rulebook, which oh, sort of half explains what's going on over here with our nice big world map. We have our factions, which show the vehicles that are available to be used. So the, the likes for the Americans have the M1, and they have the M901. Is that 901? Yeah, 901, the 901, the, other the ITV. Uh, Soviets have the T64 and the BMP. French have the AMX-30 and the AMX-10P. British, of course, have to have the Chieftain yeah. and the 432, which is in this configuration, the Swing Fire. And the Germans, of course, Leopard 2 and Leopard 1. I think the Germans are getting the best deal out of this because they're getting two tanks. Yeah. <laughs> However, there are, as you'll see in a bit, there's cards to get other vehicles that you've already got on the table. Yeah. Um, but we've got... All of these vehicles are already out, mm -hmm. obviously, because we've already got them in plastic yeah. for Team Yankee. We've got the blisters for them. Yeah. Because the blisters, as we all know from playing tanks, you get those extra lovely little um, extra cards purely for that particular vehicle. Yeah. And this is what's good about this, because if you're a Team Yankee player and your your platoon, for example, is, one, is minus one vehicle, well, you buy the blister. You've got the cards for Tanks Modern, so if you want to play Tanks Modern... You're yeah. already building up that, that stockpile of stuff for it. Absolutely. So, um, let's have a look through some other pages here. So this goes through the explanation of the cards. So you have the vehicle cards. There's a, a, a sneaky helicopter down there. Yes. All your equipment, damage cards, that sort of thing. And then playing the game. So all pretty straightforward. You and I will be delving into that at some point. Uh, the other thing that we get in here, which is important, is the assembly instructions. So on this side, T-64, and on this side, the Abrams as well. So, always good to have instructions. Always have instructions. Yeah. <laughs> and right. then obviously we've got the, the card pre-punch-out 
the, the uh, terrain which we punch out. Yeah. Um, for those of you that have, that have seen the game played before with um, the original tanks, mm -hmm. it's the same kind of format with the, the thick bundle of... Uh, sort of card stock? Yeah, if yeah. I can get them out. Um, like this, which is... It's already already painted. Yep. Um, they're double-sided. You've got buildings. You've got woods. Um, and obviously, being the same scale, for those of you who want to start driving around deserty kind of locations, yep. you can use the uh, desert versions that we, we've already got for for tanks um, World War Two. Mm-hmm. No, no one wants to look at card terrain. No, no one wants to look at instruction manuals or how to play, or they... even the fact that the dice are y Yank and Soviet. Ah, well, that's true. So let's get a camera up here and just nice little bag of blue and red dice. Yeah, Does, do they have the hammer and sickle on them? No, no. Oh. That was the first thing that I was wondering when when it arrived on the desk. I opened it up. <coughs> it was like a. Oh, I was expecting <laughs> a hammer and sickle, but. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we can have a word with someone and get and get some uh, some knocked out. Maybe. Um, who do we need to talk to about? <laughs> we'll, we'll start sending the emails. Yeah. <laughs> right. Everyone is here really for the plastic because it's the plastic that sells the game. Yeah. I always say. So of course, let's have a look at the Abrams first because it is the American monster, uh, the monster tank, still in service today. Of course, it's been in service since the seventies. Yeah. And it is a superb vehicle. Uh, lovely lines are and brilliantly represented on this kit as well in this nice sort of Yankee green plastic which is I guess what you were alluding to earlier where yeah. you're getting pre-coloured plastics and up against the other sprue there yeah. you can uh, you can see the difference yep so you have like the Soviet green versus the, the Yankee green I always hate this colour that <laughs> reminds me of toy soldiers you know from like Toy Story yeah. where they go 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 They're the, it's the proper green army man yeah it is yeah green army man <laughs> <laughs> green army men, but you're, I mean, it's funny because the the green of the Soviet stuff is almost the base color of of the spray. Yeah, the base coat. Yeah, very, very, very close to it. Yeah. So anyway, Abrams, we have. If you guys aren't familiar with the Team Yankee range, upper lower turret, upper hull, lower hulls down here, tracks, uh, gun mantlet, boxes, jerry cans. Uh, we have various machine guns here. So we have the M2 Browning, which is the 50 caliber, and the M249, I think this yeah, is this in this iteration. Yeah. We then have open and open and closed uh, Commander's Cupola. Down here, you've got two gun barrels. So this one over here is the 105, and over here is the 120 millimeter as well. Yeah. Uh, that will be basically between the M1 and the M1A1, which is that's the major difference between those two tanks. Uh, is the gun that they went with. Yeah. Over here we have the turret bustle racks, so the side racks, the rear rack, that sort of thing. If you're building it as a a straight M1, it won't have any baskets on the back of the bustle at all. Yeah. Uh, if it's the M1A1, or is it the M1IP? I, the, oh, yeah, it's the IP. IP had the bustles on it. Yeah, but the, the we've A1 also, had. actually, while we're talking on that subject... If you look again at the, um, you want where the the hull of the yeah the hull section, yeah, you can see the two different lengths of um, caging that goes around the turret. One's yep. long and one's short. Yeah. So this would be the the shorter one would be the IP, I believe. Yeah, it's actually on the. Uh, I think it's in here somewhere. No. It's on the on the assembly instruction. It will show you uh, which way they go somewhere. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. It's on there, five and six. Yeah. You'll see the two different links. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see if I can get that on a better camera here. So yeah, these three images along the bottom, the, the variants are the M1, which is the standard M1. You then have the M1 IP, which is initial, stands for initial production, and then the M1 A1, which has the longer bustle yeah. at the back and everything like that. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it was the diversion, the di divergent tank. Mm -hmm. Um, up until the, for anyone that that, that uh, is interested, the Americans and the Germans both use the M60, <clears throat> and towards the end of the sixties, the they decided that they needed a new vehicle. Yeah. Um, the Germans weren't happy with the M1 design. They wanted something else, so they went off to the Leopard. Yep. 
probably one of the most <laughs> iconic. So the Americans powered loads of money into the M1 with a, a gas turbine engine. Yep. Um, and the Germans went down to one of their old tank graveyards, dragged out a Panther, put a new engine in her, yep. up gunned her, up armoured, and she is basically a Panther. Yeah. Um, but it it's kind of um, nice for those that are playing Western allies. You've got that's the point. The M60 up to that point, you could use M60 for German or American, and suddenly we've got this. Yeah. And then when you see the leopards, you'll see how different the the, uh, the vehicles are. Yeah, particularly when you see Leopard One against a, an M1, and you're like, well, Leopard One really is like a more medium tank esque thing. It's faster. It's yeah. lighter. It doesn't. It had for for a while. It had the same punch <laughs> before they changed to the 120 on the Abrams, but yeah. Still all great tanks all around. Yeah. On to the Soviets. We have the T-64. Now, Freddie, I don't know a lot about the T-64 other than it was a Russian tank. <laughs> this, um, I, in a previous life, I used to fire fast-moving pieces of metal um, on guidance wiring downrange at these sort of things. <laughs> it, it was along the lines of, um, price-wise, like banging... A Peugeot 206 family car downrange on a bit of fishing wire, um, <laughs> 12 seconds to 2,000 meters. But we, the uh, bulk of the Soviet forces base, facing Brit, Great Britain were um, Third Shock Army, who were the Soviets. For those not in the know, Soviets. I've seen so many people with the Soviet Army, and they use T72. Yeah, it was actually the T64. We call it the Alpha. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the kit in a minute. Will John's getting rather excited. We'll um we'll explain the difference, but ostensibly it was the bulk of the Soviet ground forces yep. main battle tank. The seventy two was um it was a it was uh, more expensive to produce. Yeah, and the guy who designed it, I forget his name. If anyone knows, um, post a comment. But he had the ear of the Politburo and said, "No, we're going to stick with the T sixty four. Yeah. Um, the 72 then became the export version. 64, very, very capable. Um, the Bravo variant, which um, with a bit of doctoring you can make, could fire the 88 Songster through mm -hmm. the barrel. Um, guided missiles. That out of a, 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 a 60 zero tank was mm -hmm. back in the day. But I think they're iconic. Yeah. Um, very fast. Quite well armoured. Yep. Um, and they would have given the, the Centurion... Um, and the, the beginnings of the Chieftain family are run for its money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so looking at the kit, what you what I noticed straight away was, because I'm not familiar with it, I'm picking out areas that look very similar to T-72. So like the, the front glacis looks very similar because yeah, you've v got that V. Plate. And I have a feeling that, that that was something that maybe a lot, a lot of tankers back in the day might have confused the two, the two vehicles with because they were always, I think... Tank recognition at the time was you'd pick one or two features from a vehicle and say that's what it is. Yeah, it, it was along the like with aircraft, wings, engine, fuse, large tail. Yep. Um, as an, I, mean, I used to teach this back in the days, I'll probably get some a herd of abuse when I go home. <laughs> um, I was a regimental train spotter, but basically the differences between the the T sixty four Alpha and the seventy two, both of them had the driver sitting central, which is why you've got that V shaped falling plate. Yep. The trick was the snorkel. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at the kit assembled, you'll see it when we're playing with them in a minute. 72 had it at an angle on mm -hmm. the left-hand side of the turret, whereas the 64 had it packed on the back of the turret bustle yep. up high. They'd have a snorkel and, depending on the variant, an antenna um, case. Or literally the same vehicle. It's just that the 64 had... The armour was a bit thicker. Mm -hmm. It was made of glass and ceramic plates with a bit of steel in there, but almost the same vehicle. Yeah. Same sets of running gear. Um, quite it, it, at 2,000 metres, when, you, when you're in a trench, quite difficult to distinguish the differences, the two, to be honest. Particularly front on and, and potentially hull down as well. You yeah, might yeah. not know what it is. I mean, we, we used to take them on with, with the Milan system. Um with enfilade and defilade. So yeah. if you had a hill, you'd sit and the, and the tanks are coming in from this direction. You'd hide behind the hill here and hit them side on yeah. as they came in the killing area because you don't want to be shooting at them <laughs> head on because they're, they're quite beastly. But uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, funny Soviet tank design. They kind of there were no sudden changes like with World War Two. Yeah, they were kind of happy with their running gear, uh, crew alignment. With the seventy twos, they were able to have an auto loader in them. Yeah, which lowered the um, weight because of the, they didn't have that extra crew member. But other than that. Pretty much same vehicle. Pretty much more or less as effective as a 72, but a little bit cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, nothing wrong with that. So basic. that's the basic rundown of the T64. Uh, should we have a look at some cards? We, we'll yeah. just we'll pick a couple out if I can maybe open it or... Yeah. I mean, while you're opening them, I'll, um, I'll, yeah, we've got on, um, on the sprues... We've got some external stowage, like the fuel fuel um, canisters. Yeah. Um, the later type, which were like a circular drum. We've got the KMT mine plow sections that we can glue on. Yep. Um, we've got the, the rubber skirting plates. Um, so you, you, you can kind of customise the vehicle. Yeah. Um, you've got the um, Dushka machine gun on, on the roof, the 12.7 as well, which you can fit on it. Um, which in this game with helicopters, you're going to kind of need unless you've got, if you've got no dedicated anti-air. Yeah. So let's, right, so that's the American card. So let's very quickly go through some of these cards here. So if I can find myself under this camera and not, well, let's switch the camera, this one. So some of the American vehicles here, we have the LAV. Yeah. I Humvee. think they, they were more US Marine, weren't they? Yeah. LAV, LAV 25. Humvee with the tow. Yeah. LEV80, uh, various other things here. So, Patton, which of course we've just talked about. <laughs> yeah. The ITV, we have the Cobra, which is going to be quite kind of fun to play with. Yeah. The M1, the M1 IP, and the M1A1, which is great because now you have an excuse to actually put the 120 on because yeah, I, yeah. I believe in Team Yankee, the first of the initial books didn't give you the option to put no. the 120 on. So. No. That's great. <laughs> so let's see. Now, there's more than American and Soviet in here because there's there's the British cards as well. Yeah. I'm not going to show those because I'm just going to let you guys find out for yourselves because I'm cruel and unusual like that. So yeah. let's... I mean, the, the, the Chieftain kit has got the option for the Steel Brew um, later variant, yep. Steel Brew turret or the original turret. Yeah. Um, so you can do a, what, a, a Mark V... And the still brew was a Mark Nine. Uh, do you know? I'm going to put my hands up and say you don't know. I spent a, a few years as an anti tanker. I hardly know any British vehicles because it was. Um, You're identifying I, the enemy one. I progressed on, on to dealing with not only with spotting choo, the the uh, Russians, the Soviet stuff, but um, working out its tactics as well. So I, I didn't hardly any yeah. British vehicles. Um, in fact. Friends of mine are going to be watching this. No names, no pack drill. Guy in the platoon once famously, we used to use one 300th micros at 25 meters with a pair of binoculars. Yeah. They looked like a vehicle at 2,000 meters. And he um, he got, I think it was the uh, tracked rapier muddled up with a, two, uh, a, a 2S1, uh, which is a Soviet anti, anti uh, it's an artillery piece. Yeah. Which was it didn't go down very well, but we're not going to mention any names. <laughs> um, yeah, you can get that muddled up because track rapier looks nothing like it. No, right. Some of your Soviet vehicles then. So let's see if I can get it in here. So of course BMP, which is the BMP two variant. Yeah. Get the T fifty five, which is going to be fun to play with because the I the love... BMP twos were um they were used actually two per company that yeah. carried the machine gun platoon usually with AGS seventeen. Yeah, just as a bit of a, I'm going into spotting mode now. So T55, which is my favorite post-war tank of all time. I don't care what anyone says about its capability. It is my favorite tank of all time. And if I ever have the money, I will own one, a real one. <laughs> uh, T55 AM2, which is the later model, which has extra applique armor on the front hull and turret cheeks, as well as a laser rangefinder above the, the gun mantlet. Had I not been showing that with glare all over it. <laughs> uh, T-62 of course another Soviet staple uh, T-62M again same as T-55AM2 has the cheek armour, applique armour uh, some I think there's some ERA down the sides and yeah. again a laser rangefinder on the top the, of um, 
Well, yeah, I mean, we, we've been um, discussing like the the, the um, identification reference points. The easiest way to, to identify or, or to differentiate between a T62 and a T55 is the 55 has got a gap between the first and second road wheel yep, and the fume extractors at the end of the barrel. Yep. Whereas a 62, no gap, fume extractor is about a third of the way down. Yeah. Um, otherwise, both bucket size or bucket shaped turret with the curved handrails. Yeah. All right. Back to our T62M, uh, which is all cool. You then have the T64, which we get in the box. Yeah. And T72. And what was the last one? Of course, the cheeky hind, which is great to see helicopters coming into play on this as well. Yeah. Uh, so more or less everything else is how tanks World War Two is. You have your damage deck, you have your crew and upgrade yeah. set as well. Firing works the same. Yep. Um, but now you can because of few, uh, smoke smoke discharges. If you want to leave a vehicle stationary, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you. The way that we simulate the smoke discharges is we put a a movement marker next to the vehicle with it staying stationary. Yep. And it'll still it, it kind of masks the vehicle. But other than, other than that, the only other difference is that we've now got guided missiles, which are fired from in front of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, but you you can't fire them if you if you've moved once, moved twice. It's going to make hitting the target a, li a little bit harder. Yep. Um, and the helicopters can either hover. Or they can change altitude um, again for moving around at the, the, the table, which uh, is quite good. But mm -hmm. other than that, if you've played tanks, I think, oh, you know, is it going to be a load, a load of extra stuff? It's not really. Yeah. We've just accommodated um, the capability modern of a capabilities. Modern yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm not going to show off some of these because I just want to read out a couple of the names. So anyone that has played Team Yankee or has read the Team Yankee book, I have it on audiobook and hard copy because I'm that sad. Uh, you will recognize some of these names. So Joseph Ortelli, who is Alpha 66's driver from the, the book. You have Robert Falk, who is the gunner of Alpha 66. And I think there'll probably be a few others in there too. So if you really want to play a themed game, you could take a battle scene out of Team Yankee and actually just play it out in, in tanks. There's a particularly good battle in there as well where they're facing down three t62s in their solitary abrams yeah it's actually i don't know whether you want to showcase this John. are you are you showing off now is it already in there actually we've got the four uh, like with the um with t with the, the tanks world war ii uh -huh. where we had um oh you Bar do barkman's corner <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we've in this we've got the last stand of uh of alpha 66 six. yeah basically for those not in the know um team yankee it's a platoon um, and he's had his antennas fragged yep. from the top of the vehicle. <laughs> the last order the guys have got is, is to keep moving. So the rest of the platoon charges yep. off, and Alpha 66 has just sat there going, uh-oh, <laughs> where did everybody go? <laughs> Almost like, um, what's the guy from Goonies? Are you guys? <laughs> you got sloth. Are you guys? Um, but Bannon then notices that there's some Soviets that are trying to work their way around the flank of yep. his platoon, so he's about to give them the good news. Yeah. Um, um, we'll yeah. we'll not spoil that battle because no, we won't. it it has a bit of a interesting end to it. So, but that's what this this game system is all about. I mean, I we we've all been there. We get we've gamed out, and we like we've been to Essen or we've been wherever, and it's oh, I don't want to set loads of, of minis up. Yeah. Let's just throw the tanks on the table. Yeah, um, easy. Uh, with I mean, with the it's kind of okay when you use the car terrain. Yeah. I mean, I, I travel with it. You can put it in a bag, carry it around, lay it out anywhere and play. But it, it is better when you've got 3D terrain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, based for those cinematic moments. Mm -hmm. This and this is why I, I, I will admit that Flames of War and Team Yankee, not so much Team Yankee, but certainly Flames of War 3rd, really felt like a drag to me it was like i have to get so much stuff i have to put it all out in the table and yeah. then tanks world war ii came out and we played that with phil yates myself and justin played that with phil yates and um i remember we completely annoyed him i remember watching that and oh how i laughed he said he said to us before we started the game's going to take half an hour 
Justin, he didn't bank on how Justin and I tried to tear each other apart and, and play against each other. The game took over an hour. You broke it, didn't you? We broke it. But again, I mean, it's like, um, I don't know if anyone watching saw the game that we that we were doing at um, at the Open Day back mm. in June when you guys decided to use just, just one mini each. Yeah. I think you had an IS, uh, an I, ISU. I had an IS2. Yeah. Because I still have the model of it. Justin, Justin took a super Persian. But it was again. I thought, yeah, two two vehicles. It's going to be over in ten minutes. No, half an hour later. <laughs> <coughs> in fact, the streetlights came on. I nearly had to go in. <laughs> um, still, and what was? I think you were hanging on with with like one point of hull damage left on each vehicle. Yeah. Still going for it, driving yep. around a, a house. And then in, in our game with Phil Yates, uh, every time Justin moved the Panther. I just readjusted my Shermans just to keep the the, the best armor to him. Or yeah. Every time, no, it was he was playing Shermans. <coughs> so every time he maneuvered to me, I just would like slightly back up a bit, or slightly go forward a bit, or just yeah. turn myself a bit, and he'd be getting so frustrated and so annoyed because I kept using the cover to my advantage. Every time he did something, I put the cover between us, and he was like, "Would you stop that and shoot me?" <laughs> then it became a Mexican standoff, and I think I blew up. So, but yeah. I mean, that's what it's, it's, it's about Hollywood. Yeah. It's about Hollywood. I, um, I won't mention the, uh, the the magazine in question, but a magazine that I read every month about this hobby ran an article a little while ago about Hollywood on the tabletop, and yeah. it, it's absolutely true. Some of us like doing the, you know, let's keep it absolutely as it was, but yeah. let's face it, when you've got an M1 charging across a table on fire yeah. <laughs> and it won't die, um, that kind of, when you finish the game, it's kind of the sort of thing that you'll be thinking of months later yep and it's it, it boils down to two things guys you you other historical players should know that you either when you come to a game like this you either want to recreate history or you just want to play fury yeah because there's not much historical about fury <laughs> absolutely i mean in fact on on youtube a couple of nights ago in my feed some clever guy has done if fury was british i've seen that Squire, yeah. Squire, he does a lot of War Thunder yeah. videos and stuff. Squire, sir, I take my hat off to you. The Polish squadron, <laughs> um, I think it was a Sherman. Repeat, please. Repeat, yeah. please. Doing the Battle to, of Britain yeah, bit. Yeah. I, I cried all over, the, all over the keyboard. Brilliant. Fantastic. So, guys, that is our unboxing slash rant on Tanks the Modern Age. Thank you so much for watching and joining in on... Uh, whatever this video has ended up being. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we got well, sidetracked a bit, as usual. Uh, but... We're going to link this in with um, the game that we're going to do. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to give away a... Uh, we, we've only managed to get a few of the boxes over. The demand's been that high. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll be giving away um, a copy. Yep. I'll let John uh, work out how we're going to do it, just by comments or... What we're going to do is when that Let's Play comes out, comment to win, guys. Just... Give us a comment on whatever format it's out on, and you will be in, a, in, in with a chance to win a copy of Tanks the Modern Age. So, again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Freddy, it's always a pleasure to sit down and ramble, because that's all you and I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, as anyone that knows me knows that I'm a man of few words. In fact, somebody once said that at my funeral they're going to play uh, Led Zeppelin ramble on, because it's what I do best. <laughs> and we're not talking walking, either. Okay, guys. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Yep. Okay, guys, get your comments down below. Let us know what you think of this video. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong? Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>